Hey, it's Ross from RossLukeman.com. Today I want to talk to you about how to add ferrules to your small signal and power wires within your electrical systems. Now with the larger conductors, you're going to have lug terminals typically, and you're going to be able to bolt those cables in place. But with the small signal and power wires, you're going to want to essentially insert them into inputs on, for instance, this battery monitor here. This is a smart shunt from Victron. And also for larger appliances like your inverter charger, you may have inputs for voltage or temperature, and you're going to want to insert these small wires, typically 18 gauge wires or smaller into these inputs. Now you can do it without a ferrule, but the ferrule is going to give you several advantages. If you do just the bare wires, it's going to be hard to get all those strands in there. And then the wires are pretty slick. Now there is kind of a trigger that you depress that's going to lock that wire in there, but it's easy to pull that wire out with the ferrule. It's going to not only lock all of the strands of the wire together, so it's going to make sure all the strands get into that connection, but it's also going to have small ridges that are going to make it harder for that wire to pull out of that input. And uh, so it's just going to give you a more secure connection. It's going to make sure 100% of the strands of that wire get in there so you have a good electrical connection. And uh, just from an appearance aesthetic standpoint, it's just going to look more professional than a bare wire that you somehow got into that input. And uh, just lastly, it's going to be a lot less frustrating. It's pretty difficult to get all the strands of a small wire into an input like this. With the ferrule, it's just going to make it a lot easier. And then if you have to come back later, pull that connection apart and redo something, it's going to be a lot easier to reassemble. So there are several advantages to ferrules. What I'd like to do in this video is just zoom in and uh, I'm going to crimp a ferrule and show you the connection. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about the part numbers for the ferrule crimper that I recommend and then where I get my ferrules. Um, I do have an assortment that I purchased on Amazon that I have not really been able to utilize. Pretty much every ferrule in there is the wrong size. So I'm going to tell you what to look for to get a good ferrule connection. Uh, typically for 18 gauge wire is 100% of my ferrules are installed on 18 gauge power and signal wires. So I'm going to tell you uh, which part number I recommend, which brand and where to get it. It's not on Amazon. So with that, let's go ahead and zoom in and uh, we'll crimp our ferrule. All right, so we're going to add this ferrule to this 18 gauge wire. We're going to plug it into these inputs on the smart shunt here. So what we need to do first is kind of gauge how far back to strip our wire. We want to go uh, at least up to the metal tube, probably a little bit further. And uh, just mark that with your finger. And we'll come in here and strip that back. If you go too far, you can always trim the strands that stick out the end of the metal tube once it's crimped on there. Grab our crimper and we'll insert the ferrule into the end of the crimper crush it down and you can see the little ridges that we have there. Those are going to make it so that the wire is less likely to pull out of the connection. And then we're just going to press it into the connection there. Now, some of these Victron inputs are a little bit deeper. And so this particular ferrule that I use works for this more shallow connection as well as uh, some of the deeper inputs. And it makes sure that you're not going to be able to pull it out. If you use a ferrule that's too short, uh, it's not going to get in there and grab, and it's more likely to pull out of that connection. So that's how you would add a ferrule, and uh, you would just use a jeweler screwdriver and depress the orange trigger if you wanted to pull that out. But for now, we have a great mechanical connection and then also a great electrical connection as well. Now before we get into the part numbers for the specific ferrules that I recommend and the ferrule crimper, I've got a resource that you may be interested in. It's called the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet and it's great if you're doing a power system for a van or RV. There's a discussion of the three major charging sources for your power system, including solar power, shore power, and alternator power and how they all have strengths but also have weaknesses. But when you combine them into a holistic power system, it's going to make sure that you have a charge no matter where you go out on the road, whether you're plugged in at a campground 
or you're way out in a desert, it's going to ensure that you have a good charge so you can enjoy your trip and not worry about running out of power out there. So there's a discussion of those three charging sources. There's also a discussion of different battery chemistries and the strengths and weaknesses of those. And that's gonna help you narrow in on which battery type is gonna be right for your project. And then lastly, there is a really illuminating conceptual diagram that's gonna show your entire power system on one page. It's gonna show the three major charging sources at the top and how they make their way through the system to your end devices, such as your phone charger or your microwave. What are those connections in there? And how do you get this solar power to play nice with the alternator power and the shore power? How do they all come together to charge those batteries and get distributed? So it's a really illuminating diagram that I think you'll find helpful. If you want your own copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet, all you have to do is click that link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. So with that, let's talk about the specific part numbers that I recommend. Now these ferrules that I used in our demonstration, these are 18 gauge ferrules from Panduit. And I'll go ahead and put that part number down below. And the tube is a little bit longer. It's 1532 long. So it's right, it's a hair under half an inch long. And uh, what I found with the assortment from Amazon is they have an 18 gauge uh, ferrule in there, but the tube is short enough where it pulls out from a lot of the inputs that I put it in. And uh, so you, you want to go ahead and avoid that. And it ended up making this kit kind of useless. And uh, I'll say too, when you order these Panduits on Amazon, they're going to sell you 500 of them. Um, what you want to do is go to an electronic store like Mauser, mauser.com or DigiKey and uh, you can order one of them if you want to. They're about 25 cents. If you need, just need 10 or 20 for your project, you can order it there. Uh, spend four or five dollars instead of $80 for a 500 pack. Uh, I know most of us don't need 500. Uh, you can see I have a little bag here, but um, that is the ferrule that works for me for 100% of my connections. I've done a lot of power systems and I just use this one little uh, Panduit 18 gauge ferrule. Now, as far as the crimper, I use an IWIS hexagonal crimper, and I'll go ahead and put the part number for that as well. And uh, most of the crimpers are gonna give you a four-sided crimp. This is going to give you a six-sided crimp. Honestly, it's probably not any better. <laughs> I just, you know, six-sided sound a little bit more exotic than four-sided, but whether you get four or six sides to your crimp, uh, the main thing is that you get a good solid crimper that's going to uh, do a good crimp and give you a good connection, good electrical connection. So that is my uh, training on ferrule crimpers. I hope that was helpful. Again, if you want help on your overall van or RV electrical system, click that link below and grab a copy of your Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.